At the beginning of the movie, the Norwegian Child Welfare Services are first closely monitoring Debika and Anirud's parenting of their two children. The couple moved to Norway after Debika's marriage to Anirud. Shub and Shuchi, two children of the lovely couple, were born. The Norwegian Child Welfare Services did not provide any specific instructions on what the couple should do in order to be capable of raising their children. Without disclosing their future plans, they covertly make notes regarding Debika and Anirud's antics while interfering with Shuchi's immunization regimen. When Debika informed her husband that Matilda and Sia had been visiting for more than four months, he expressed anxiety. He tells his wife that they must adhere to the Velford system if they want to remain in Norway before leaving for work. Anirud's pursuit of Norwegian citizenship is his top priority, and he appears willing to go above and beyond to achieve it. The next morning, Ms. Alice Ramfjord, an Oslo senior officer, Matilda, and Sia visited their house for one more inspection. Anirud believes that completing his job and making money is sufficient, so he finds it impossible to envisage aiding Debika with domestic duties and caring for his children. He physically abuses Debika at home and continually insults her in public. The child welfare services in Norway abduct Debika's children, and she suffers severe injuries while attempting to pursue them. Due to their unclean behaviors and the fact that Anirud doesn't assist Debika with domestic duties and child care, it is made clear to Debika and Anirud that they are unfit to raise their own children, Shub and Shuchi. A lawyer is provided for them by the Norwegian government. According to the Norwegian authorities, Mrs. Chatterjee force-fed her children, which is illegal and is regarded as poor parenting, and did so with her hands. According to Velfred, who was keeping an eye on the family, the couple hit the kids, which is considered physical punishment. The shocking part was that while these behaviors would appear commonplace to Indians, the Norwegian government has rigorous child protection legislation. Anirud and Debika were granted permission to see their child. She broke down in tears as a result of her emotions. The Velfry translator warned her not to cry in front of the kids and not to form family ties with her own kids because they would miss her when she was gone. Mrs. Chatterjee makes the decision to set out on a journey to defy Norway's child custody laws in order to be reunited with her children. In the presence of eminent professionals, attorneys, and activists, Sunil Kapoor takes the podium at the conference. In his stirring speech, he emphasizes the necessity of changing the law around child custody in order to safeguard parental rights and maintain cultural identities. When he tells the authorities that cultural differences were to blame for the misunderstanding, his comments have a powerful impact on the audience and inspire them to become even more determined to bring about change. However, Mr. and Mrs. Chatterjee are given instructions to be better integrated with the Norwegian system in their children's upbringing, resulting in the Conciliation Board nullifying Velford's order. The Conciliation Board decides that the mother is permitted to convey her cultural ideas with her children. Within the next 24 hours, the kids were supposed to see their parent again. As they get ready to go pick up their children, Debbie and her husband are ecstatic with the decision. However, the Child Welfare Services overturned their decision, claiming that a fresh testimony from one of the calm others from the school had revealed that their home was unfit for raising children and that his wife was unstable. The next day, Daniel Subek, the second attorney that the government of Norway has assigned to the Chatterjees, takes on the Welfare Services. He draws attention to the fact that the welfare services lack the funding to care for the children they are snatching away, and he even claims that they are to blame for the rise in child prostitution in Norway. Daniel advises Debika to check her language since he won't take the insult lying down. Despite his desire to succeed, he is frustrated by Debika's actions and is unsure of how to get her to see how they are impacting their case. Daniel presents strong justifications for Debika, but ultimately their case is unsuccessful. Beginning of Debika's two-year separation from her son and daughter Two months after the separation, Rabia Hussein took Dobby to visit Nundani, a mother who had her kid placed in foster care. She also practices law, but since Norway does not recognize her degree, she owns a shop. She claimed that Velfred is a very risky organization that conducts commerce under the guise of fostering children. 
Norway uses its wealth to entice immigrants from developing nations. Once these immigrant families arrive, they are immediately bombarded with additional laws and restrictions on top of those they already have to follow. They give their children up for adoption and place them in foster care when they don't cooperate. The welfare center, as well as the attorneys who represent and oppose them, benefit financially from this process. When Debika Chatterjee tries to warn her husband about Velford's immoral behavior, he doesn't trust her and tells her to stop following rumors. She abducts her own kids from foster care and intended to flee to Sweden in an effort to permanently reunite with her children forever but unfortunately, she was caught at the airport. When her lawyer with her husband got to the airport, the officer gave the lawyer two options, is either she is deported back to India or sent to jail. Debika's vision is blurry, and she isn't interested in seeing anything besides the children she is holding in her arms and in front of her. Anirudh longs to leave the commotion of his native West Bengal and live as an NRI in the stunning nation of Norway. Anirudh used to be a perfect person who desired happiness for both himself and his wife. In order for them to live a wonderful life, he took her abroad. When they had their second kid, he became increasingly busy and was unable to do a single household task while she cleaned, cooked, and looked after their two young children. Even though none of this is really out of the ordinary, Anirudh has a horrible habit of never owning up to his own mistakes and instead blaming the entire world for his difficulties. Debika is to blame for the kids being taken away. Due to Debika's friend's complaints of domestic violence, the child services team showed up. In addition to physically abusing his wife, Anirud also verbally abuses her. He claims she deserves to be confined to a room in front of her parents. He silences her every time she attempts to express even a single word about wanting her children back. Returning to the courtroom, Daniel finds himself negotiating convoluted legal proceedings and questioning the status quo. Despite the language barrier and their various cultural backgrounds, Barrett Hansen, who comes from a different background than Debika, chooses to support Debika because of how far she is prepared to go to get her children back. Debika knows that she would never do anything to hurt her children. There was a video broadcast showing Mrs. Chatterjee assaulting a police officer. The judge dismisses Mrs. Chatterjee's petition after concluding that she is mentally ill, and the children will remain state wards until they turn 18 years old. Debika receives frequent prodding from Anirudh's parents who should be assisting her. Debika leaves the house dressed up and pretending to go to the temple to pray for her children, which her mother-in-law doesn't refrain from remarking on. However, Debika actually goes to speak to the visiting politician because she is wise enough to take advantage of this situation to save her children. After a successful attempt to win over the authorities, she returns and prepares the rice, milk, and banana meal that she gives her children before devouring it in front of her husband's entire family. As soon as the Indian Foreign Minister Vasudha Kamat learns about Debika's situation, he suspends plans for a telecom transaction that he was in Norway to complete. Because it's embarrassing for them, the Norwegian government is compelled to resolve the issue as soon as possible. An official from the government is given the case to investigate by Kamat. So that Debika can care for them after they return to India, Madhusudhan makes sure that Anirudh's brother is given custody of Debika's children. Comet is nowhere to be found, and Madhusudhan consoles Debika after Anirudh and his family break their end of the bargain and refuse to let her see her kids. Due to the fact that Anirudh's brother is the foster father of Shub and Shuchi, Anirudh's in-laws refuse to deliver the child to Debika despite accepting funding from the Norwegian government. Debika is coerced into divorcing Anirudh while he is in Norway. She is currently engaged in litigation with Anirudh's in-laws for the children's custody. Once more, Daniel enters the scene on behalf of the Norwegian government and makes the case that neither Anirudh's brother nor Debika are capable of caring for the kids and that they should be sent back to Norway, where they can receive the care, educational guidance, and employment opportunities that Debika and India cannot offer. Debika responds to the judge's inquiry regarding her opinions. I'm not sure if I'm a good or awful mother, but I do have children. For her children, a mother will do anything. She was raised by devoted parents in a small town in West Bengal. 
She chose to pursue a bachelor's in science without hesitation because she knew that her father thought she needed to go to school. She is generous and driven to provide happiness to everyone around her. Her mother then urged her to get married, which she did. Nobody ever asked Debika what she wanted, so she agreed to follow her husband's desires and relocate to Norway. She gave birth to two gorgeous children there and started to adjust to living away from home and building a life for herself in a foreign country speaking a foreign language. Her children quickly grew to be the center of her universe, but it was abruptly and unexpectedly torn from her in a matter of seconds. The sole competent attorney for Debika calls Daniel to the witness stand. She asks Daniel if adoptive parents may love their kids more, which is a highly personal question, and Daniel is positive it is possible because he was adopted. However, he is receptive to understanding Debika's love for her kids and decides to speak the truth on her behalf since he cannot bear to watch this woman be torn apart from her kids for any longer. Following three days of heated back and forth between the three parties, Pertop demonstrates that Debika is well capable of caring for Shub and Shuchi and that she should be granted custody of them once more. This decision is supported by Daniel, and Unirud and his in-laws descend into personal misery. As soon as Debika is granted custody of her children, Daniel congratulates her right away. As the sun goes down, Mrs. Chatterjee's tale keeps inspiring countless people and sparked a worldwide movement to change child custody laws and defend the sanctity of families. Her name becomes a byword for valor, tenacity, and the relentless pursuit of justice. Never undervalue the strength of willpower or love. Together, we can overcome any difficulty. Thank you for watching.